uh, side effects from immunotherapy will generally be related to your immune system maybe going a little bit crazy instead of just attacking the cancer cells it might be looking at some of your healthy cells and sometimes you might not actually feel that happening. As a cancer nurse, I think it's really important for our patients to first of all know how immunotherapy works, but also to know that there are some side effects that are more common than others. The ones that I really like um, patients to know about are fatigue, diarrhea, uh, shortness of breath, cough, rash and skin itch. Early on, I, I think the first one I had breathing problems. I remember I was out fishing with a friend of mine and I started to lose my breath and, and I had to come in and what I did wrong again was I didn't notify the hospital about it, I sort of put it off a bit. Side effects with the immunotherapy, there have been a few with Melissa because she's had quite a long journey, um, <laughs> some minor, some major. Um, rashes like were probably the first ones and we went through, yeah, had a few rashes, um, not pretty, <laughs> but we managed to deal with it. So whenever something would come up, we'd be straight on the phone and call and find out, you know, should we, do we need to see the doctor about this? And uh, yeah, they were very, they're always very good in advising us whether we should or shouldn't. And we never felt like we couldn't um, call. It was always, always someone to call, which is very reassuring when you're in that situation. So the side effects can start um, at any time uh, during the treatment. Uh, they tend to be more common after you've had a couple of cycles um, of treatment, uh, but we always like patients to be aware that they can occur um, at any time that they're receiving their treatment. So I was probably about three infusions in when uh, it, it became fairly obvious to me that some side effects were um, beginning to occur. Um, common ones like tiredness that grew into some deep fatigue. Um, aches and pains, everyone has aches and pains uh, that gradually grew for me uh, and became quite, quite severe. Um, and quite quite obvious. So a fatigue side effect can start right away. I mean, you have to remember coming into hospital, getting your treatment, there's a lot of new things happening. Even if you weren't getting a drug, that's going to be tiring and fatiguing anyways. So you have the drug on top of that that can cause some fatigue. So fatigue will start pretty much right away. Sometimes if I'm too tired, I, it does make me tired. I think everyone agrees with that. I need to rest a lot. Um, uh, if I'm tired and if I don't drink a lot of water, the side effects are much more obvious. I can have a creeping feeling on my skin, I can get a, like a piercing, nothing really painful or anything, just a crawling sensation of your scalp crawling. Um, I, I think that's all I can think of, really. She's tired, you know, so I know that, so especially the first week. And after that, it's going slowly uphill, you know, she's getting better and better through the week. In the main, I did have some quite significant side effects and needed to be taken off the immunotherapy for a, a short break um, that was picked up very quickly. Um, and uh, I bounced back very quickly, um, which was uh, very fortunate and, and terrific. There are some other um, less common and particularly vague symptoms that we also need our patients to understand, particularly when they're combined together. So for example, a headache, irritability, increased fatigue, they could be signs that there's something going on with the hormones in the body caused by the treatment. You know, when you think about them as individual symptoms, they could all be contributed to cancer diagnosis. But when you ring and tell your healthcare team about those symptoms, and especially when they're occurring together, that's a real trigger for us to think, OK, what's going on? We really need to investigate this a bit more, usually with a blood test. It was probably about four or five treatments in that I noticed some pretty severe side effects coming through. I did have liver abnormalities and 
um, meningitis as well, all due to the treatment. And I was taken off my treatment and put straight onto steroids um, immediately. And the reversal of those side effects was really quick, which was fantastic. So patients uh, can still have side effects even after their uh, treatment has finished um, and that's because of the way immunotherapy works. Uh, your immune system can create uh, memory cells and so when your body um, can encounter the same type of cancer cell again, it can mount the uh, immune response again and fight the, the cancer cell. Um, so in terms, that's why patients don't need to be um, uh, on treatment to still have really good um, responses um, to, to the treatment, um, but that's also why side effects uh, can occur even when treatment has stopped. With the side effects, I was given a big list that I stuck straight onto the fridge when I got home. And it listed off all different areas, like your skin to watch, um, you know, there were indicators of your bowels for your liver. Um, it was even just little things like watching for fatigue and headaches. And they were really, really imperative for me to continue to refer back to. And they were the things when I was feeling a little bit off or I noticed something, I would go to that list and look at it and just check that it wasn't one of those side effects. And as soon as I sort of thought maybe there was a possibility, I'd be in contact with either my nurse or my oncologist. It was nice having that list there I guess, to guide me and know that I wasn't going crazy almost or I wasn't overreacting because at times there can be so many bits and pieces that go on. You do experience lots of little things. You know, the skin side effects for me weren't severe, but I did have to use a special um, cream and I was having the increased levels of hay fever. So I was on a lot of hay fever tablets and it was just I guess, a way of almost validating it as well and making sure that keeping on top of it and making sure that I was watching those side effects and then knowing that they were actually related to the treatment. Sometimes some of the side effects are things that are very easy to put off to being, okay, well, it's because of this or it's because of that. And that's why it's really important to just keep an eye on things. And if there is anything unusual, uh, do absolutely mention it to your, your treating team. And when I'm talking about that, that can be anywhere from uh, you know, a few weeks to months after you've started your treatment. Uh, so because your, your immune system will be working away trying to get the cancer, if it starts to um, affect some of your other body systems, it might not be for a few months. So it, it is unlike chemotherapy that the side effects are very predictable. With immunotherapy, uh, the timing of the side effects is, is quite unpredictable. So we do need to just make sure that we're watching out for things. So patients should uh, contact their healthcare team if they're concerned about um, any side effect, no matter how big uh, or small. Um, we always prefer to know um, what's happening rather than patients um, sitting at home trying to manage their symptoms or work out what their symptoms uh, may be at home. Absolutely, it's important to have the team, but you've also got to reach out to the team when you're noticing something that seems out of the ordinary. And it is really important to remember that with this treatment, side effects... They're, they're ongoing. They're not something that goes away and it's not part of the treatment. You've actually got to reach out as soon as you're experiencing something that you think is happening because they need to be sorted out very quick. So a few times when I did experience side effects, I'd call either my nurse or my doctor and they would tell me to head down to one of the local hospitals. And the one thing I definitely found difficult was that they assumed I was on chemotherapy. So the biggest thing for me was making sure I identified that I was on immunotherapy. I used to actually take that piece of paper that was on the fridge with me with all the side effects listed so that they knew what to look out for in me as well. And there was information to contact my treating hospital. So it was very much about me taking control of that situation and making sure they understood what I was going through as well. My GP is totally up to date with all my medication. My drug doctor, my oncologist is, well, he's basically in charge. Um, but my GP knows everything about everything. 
at the moment? Um, yes, I'm, I made many calls to yeah, the, the department, so it is important that you know exactly what to do when you get through. Ask for the oncologist, who is your oncologist, or your melanoma nurse, and there's usually more than one of them, and after hours um, they put you through to the duty nurse, who then um, follows that through, and they always got back to us, didn't they, Kevin? Yeah, yep. Even after hours, yeah. with the answers that you know we needed, um, just to put our minds at rest until, say, the following morning, or you know, along those lines. Yeah, but it's important to have those details, even by the phone. Just keep them, you know, in your mobile or or by your house phone or anything like that. Yeah, it's important. So in terms of managing and preparing for side effects, uh, we always like um, our patients and their carers to be well informed about what the side effects uh, may be, um, so they know when they need to contact us if they're concerned about their side effects. Uh, we always like our patients to have the right contact details um, of the hospital, um, so that's in hours and out of hours, um, so they um, have the details of the people they, they need to contact if they are uh, concerned about the side effects. Keeping a diary is an excellent idea and it really does help. It empowers you because you're keeping track of your symptoms, but it also helps you communicate some of that information back to your treating team. So let's say your, your reviews might be every three weeks, let's say. Uh, at three weeks, you might not ha remember what happened in the first week, so keeping a diary is a really great way to you know, not have to rely on your memory, you've just got it written down and you can communicate back. So anything that might be bubbling away that you might not think is anything, you'll know, wow, that I've sort of been having that for six weeks now. I, you know, so that it's a really good way of tracking things and identifying things early. Well, I do think, you know, I think keeping, keeping some sort of record of it, because when you feel bad, you feel really bad and miserable and you pretty much just want to hide. And when you feel good, you forget about it, you know, suddenly. And usually by the time I go and see the doctor, I feel so good. I don't worry about all the little bits and pieces that have bothered me during the last month. And Billy, my partner, being so support, supportive and getting in extra help around the house and things like that um, and saying to me, just rest, take it easy, cheeky, you know, that that's, that's huge, having that support. And uh, friends, I've had so many people that are just willing to put in and help, so... That helps you cope with, you know, you, you know you're going through treatment and you know you've got an illness. Um, but for people to be understanding, um, and I like to just keep on, keep on keeping on anyway, but every now and then you have to listen to your body and say, well, need to go lay down. The other thing I would say is in regard to side effects, um, there is an obvious temptation um, to focus on those side effects. Uh, for many people, that won't happen at all. Um, and if they do happen, then they'll be picked up and addressed very quickly. Not to be afraid of asking when you feel different. Um, people having therapy often think, well, I'm meant to feel rotten and I'll just get on with it. But it's important to say when things are not the way they were. And sometimes uh, my dad he would be very stoic and I would notice things. And so not to also, as the carer, be afraid of saying to the clinical team, and I'd say to Dad, but remember you felt like, and he'd say, oh, yeah. We, uh, I guess, uh, tell our patients to be alert to what's, uh, the side effects, but certainly uh, not alarmed.